Hey friends, Christy here over at Crafty Christy's Creations and I have another fun silhouette studio tutorial for you and today we are um, talking about graduation and making these really fun graduation water bottle labels. Um, this was super fun and easy to make and I've got a couple of little tricks and hacks for you um, to help make them waterproof so stay tuned for that. Okay, so I went ahead and peeled off my um, water bottle label. It's still a little bit sticky. This is an Arrowhead 16.9 um, fluid ounce bottle. Um, basically, kind of your standard water bottles. Some of them might be a little bit wider, but this is what I'm using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this so we know um, where to start. So going across, Let's use inches. Okay, so we are eight and five sixteenths long and one and six sixteenths tall. So that is going to be the size that we're going to use in Silhouette Studio when we go to make our uh, label. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into making our uh, water bottle labels. So I went ahead and measured the water bottle strip. And then um, what I came up with, it is um, 8.3125 inches long and 1.375 inches tall. So I'm going to come over here and make, make a rectangle that is that size. So I'm gonna keep my ratio aspect unlocked. And like I said, this is 8.3125, and it'll only let you go three decimal points. And then this is 1.375. Oops, seven, five. Okay. So this is going to be the size of my water bottle label. And then in the center, I want to add a circle where I'm going to um, be putting some text in here. So I'm just gonna hold down um, the shift and alt or option key on a Mac to get a perfect circle. And then I can let go. And then let's zoom in here so we can really see what we're doing. All right, and now I'm still holding that shift and alt to make that perfect circle. And I'm going to resize and I'm gonna grab both and I'm gonna hit center and that will center it up and down and left and right. And I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm just resizing a little bit bigger. Oop, and let me recenter that. You have to let go of your mouse click before you let go of the shift and alt key or um, it will happen just like it just did where it comes out a little lopsided. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. I kind of like that. And it's perfectly centered because we already centered it. So in this, I'm going to um, write some text here that we're going to curve and I'm going to write class of 2021. All right, and let's um, go ahead and give this a color. I'm going to get rid of the outline color and then I'm going to pick a fun color font or a fun font. Let's see. We want something kind of fun. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, I like that. We can clean up some of this a little bit if we want to. Um, I like the way that looks. Okay, so now to get it to our circle, we're gonna double click. And then that arrow, we're gonna pull, and we're gonna pull that over to our circle, and then it'll add it on there. And then this guy, well, you can expand out from the circle or into the circle. And I want this to be in the circle. 
So I need to change to a much smaller font size. Um, maybe like 24. Oh, I think we're going to have to highlight it all. Let's make it 24. That didn't do it. Now let's try. There we go. Okay. So now we can double click again. We can drag this out. I want it to be like just inside. Like that. And then I want to, you can mess with um, where you put it on here with this little four arrow piece. So I want to try to get it pretty centered. I think that looks good. Um, and now I can make this bigger since I know that's going to fit there. Let's try 48. If I wanted to take up the whole thing, I feel like I need to do a different font. That might be too big. Let's try 36. I think that'll be good. So again, double click. And I'm just going to readjust where this goes. Actually, I'm not really sure I love this font for this. Yeah, it gets pretty squishy. All right, let's do this. So click on it again. Let's pick a different font. And my favorite block font is Impact. Okay, let's pull this over. Readjust it where we want it. I think that looks good. And I'm going to make sure it's on my circle and it's inside my red line. So that's good. That should be good there. So once you have it how you want it and it's all done, then we're going to click off. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to path. And now what that does, when you click that, that means I can pull it off that path and it's going to maintain that arc. And then I can put it back in here kind of wherever I want. Or you can hit control Z to undo your moves and it'll put it right back where it was. Okay, so that looks good there. And then to fill in this, um, I'm going to come over to my fill panel and I'm going to use a fill pattern. And they have a really nice polka dot. So there's that one. I think I like this one better. Oh, that's big. So we can go into our advanced options for this. And you can scale it. So you can make the pattern bigger or smaller. Um, I like that. I think that'll be good. Um, and now well, we can't really read our words here, but that's okay. We can fix that. If you wanted this pattern to be a different color, you cannot just click on it and put different colors in it. Um, you would have to trace it and then reapply it, which is a lot of work, but I like the black and white. So I'm going to leave that. I'm actually going to take our words and, um, let's turn it like a gold color. Let's see, that is not gold. Um, it's very yellow. I'm just gonna go over to my color palette. Nope, let's come under here. And we can kind of pick kind of how gold we want it. Uh, oh, let's get closer to gold. It's really dark though, and so it's not showing up really well. The other thing we can do, so on our circle here, I can go ahead and fill that in with white. Oop. Control Z to undo. I want, there we go. And I'm going to fill that with white. There. Okay. So now we can see this better. 
need to get make it a little more yellow. It looks kind of green. Okay, that looks a little more gold. And so now that I've changed that circle white, I do want this to be more in my circle. So now what I might have to do is, again, shift and alt to grab everything symmetrically and pull that into my circle. And then I can bump it up here and you'll be able, and now I can also like grab both of these if I wanted. And then I can align them center across the top and then I'll make things a little bit better. Um, we're just on the edge there. We have a little more space here. So I'm just gonna take my words and left arrow key once, twice, down once, twice to make sure it's inside of my circle. It might not be perfectly centered, but that looks better um, to me. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And then I'm gonna pull in a design that I made that is a graduation hat. So I'm just going to pull in the SVG file and then I'm going to put that on there as well. So control copy, control C to copy, control V to paste. And then shift alt to resize to make sure it's the same. And then I can just throw that on there. So now I feel like this is a lot of black. Um, maybe I'm not really in love with this here. So to break that up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another rectangle. Let's zoom out here. Um, so I'm going to do another rectangle. And I'm going to make this the same width, so 8.3125. And I'm going to make it just um, 0.75 inches tall. Let's see. And then with this one, I'm going to fill it in with this last color that we used. And that, I think, will help break up Let's take this and this, and let's center those. I think that'll help break up the colors. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send this one backwards. So here we go, send backward, and that'll send it. Just keep hitting that to send it back a few layers. I like that. I think that looks better. Um, helps kind of break up that black and white. But now this looks very classic. You've got your gold, your black, and your white, which is um, very generic um, coloring for your um, you know, school graduation colors. So I'm going to grab all of these designs, and I'm going to get rid of my red outline. That wouldn't print anyways because we didn't really have a point value on it. But I'd like to get rid of it so I have a better idea of how everything looks. And I think I like the look of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these and I'm going to do control G to group. Um, if you are interested in the um, keyboard shortcuts that I'm using, you can head over to craftychristiescreations.com forward slash um, silhouette shortcuts and you can grab your copy of uh, my keyboard shortcuts. And I will also leave a link um, here so you can easily grab those but I use them all the time when I'm designing it makes it go by really fast so that's what you're hearing when I'm just saying you know control G control C those are all just the keyboard instead of using all the different functions up here um, so side note for that okay so I've got my design all done and this is going to be a print and cut project so I'm going to come over to my page setup I'm going to turn on my print and my cut border and I'm going to change my media size to letter. And then we're going to come over to the registration marks and turn those on. And I'm going to come back to a full screen view. 
Um, I've already gone through and I've adjusted some of my settings. I have to bring my bottom inset in to make sure that my red cut line is within my gray print line. You need to be able to print that entire registration mark. And then I am I scoot my the rest of them over to make them as small as possible to maximize the amount of space on uh, my piece of paper here. So the last thing we're gonna do, um, you can see it's not gonna fit this way, so we'll have to turn it sideways. So a couple other things we can talk about here. Um, if you're going to print this on sticker paper, I recommend doing something that's gonna be waterproof in case you're gonna put your water bottles in like a bucket of ice. Um, I, my sticker paper is not waterproof, so I'm going to cover the entire thing with a piece of contact paper. So to do this, I'm going to take my entire design and I'm going to give it a little bit of an offset. So I'm going to come down here to the offset panel and I'm going to do an offset and you can see it added that red line to it. And I want mine just barely noticeable. But just enough that it's going to go around the entire design. I think that looks good. And then I'm just going to hit apply. And you'll notice it added all these other red lines to it. So let's zoom back in here and see if those went away. It was adding um, kind of offset to every of the other pieces, but it looks like it went ahead and took that away. So I just have this one red line. So now with my offset on there, this is going to be my cut line. Nothing else is on there. So that's going to be my print line. Again, I'm going to grab everything so you can rubber band select or control A to select all. And then I'm um, you can do control G or you can right, uh, right click and hit group. All right, so now let's zoom back out. And now I'm going to turn my design. There we go. Uh. So if you hold down the shift key while you turn, it'll kind of stop at certain points. And now what you can do is you can come in here and you need to stay within this red line for cutting. Um, so I try to stay kind of away from the registration marks to give them some space. And now what I'm going to do to maximize my amount on here, I'm going to duplicate a couple of copies of this. And let's zoom in. That last one might not work. Okay, looks like we're just in the print border. But we're not in the cut border. Okay, so I'm just hitting um, control and minus to zoom out. And I'm going to control A, grab everything. And I'm going to left arrow key. It's going to be tight. All right, let's zoom back in and see. I'm right on the border there to cut. Let's zoom out, control minus. And then I'm going to grab that mouse zoom and let's look at this side. Looks like I'm still just outside that border, so that's not going to work. I'm just going to get rid of this last one unclick, grab this last one, and delete it. So I'm going to zoom back out, grab all of my designs, and, and now I'm going to just bring those back over to the center here, make sure they're within. And, you know, if you wanted to do some more stickers or something else, you've got some room down here to do a couple other small things, but really you're only going to get about four of these um, to a page. So we've got our registration marks on here. Uh, we've got everything set up. 
Once you've got it how you want it, don't make any more changes. Let's go ahead and print it out on the sticker paper and then I'll meet you back here to get cutting. All right, so I've got mine all printed up here uh, with the registration marks. Uh, I thought I had clear contact paper, but I do not. So I grabbed a piece of clear Oracal 651, which will, uh, you know, your contact paper will work just fine. Uh, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut it. I don't want to put it over the registration marks because I'm afraid it might not um, read well. So what I'm going to do is just take my paper here and I'm going to kind of put it over. The nice part is you can see through this. So I'm just going to try to line it up here where I need it. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger than my design. So I'm just making some marks here on the back of, there's grid lines on the back of the paper here. So I'm just making some grid mark lines so that I know where to cut this. And then I'm not going to waste my entire sheet. Okay. So I've got, I've made some marks here so I know where to cut. This is my clear Oracle 651. And then I'm just gonna cut this. So again, I'm cutting this smaller than, um, than the registration marks. So I'm not gonna cover the entire page because I don't wanna cover up those registration marks. I'm afraid the shininess from this might make those hard to read and um, manually registering your registration marks is a bit difficult. So and I've got this lined up. Again, I'm just gonna make sure that's gonna fit perfectly. So I'm just going to peel a corner, maybe, maybe. There we go, okay. And I'm just gonna try to start with one little corner here. Dang it. And I'm going to get that applied. Again, I made it a little bit larger than my design. Because remember, it didn't print our um, it did not print our offset, but we have to take that offset into consideration because that is what we're going to need to help cut this out. I'm just pressing this on here really good. We will have to make some adjustments to our cut settings, um, but we'll just kind of see how it goes. So I've just got that um, kind of here is where it is. I should have been a little more careful. It's a little short on this side and pretty big on this side. and. Maybe not enough at the top, but we'll see how it goes. So now I'm going to treat it just like I would any other print and project. Um, I'm going to come over here and we are going to um, take care of some things. Okay, now that I have it all set up, let's take a look at our send panel. And here we are going to cut by line color. And the reason we're doing that, we went through our design and we turned off the line color for um, the labels and we only have a line color for our offset. So that is what we're gonna cut, it's just that red line that's our offset. I'm gonna leave it on the cut setting and as long as I don't click anything else, I don't need to add a pause or anything else. Um, I'm going to leave this on the Oracle 651 setting I'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna do one pass. I will check it before I on um, before I unload the mat. And if I need to make some adjustments, then I'll go through and do a second pass. So let me plug in my machine here. And then I'm just going to load everything up and then we'll hit send. 
All right, so again, to put this on your mat, you want the square in the top right corner. So you want it to match what is on the screen. So on your screen, you'll see your mat with the arrow going up. So this is your top right corner where you want the square. I'm just gonna get that lined up here on my mat. All right, I'm gonna press that down really well. My mat's getting um, pretty well used, so I need to take extra care to make sure everything is laid out nicely so that it's not gonna move. All right, let's get everything loaded up in here. So I'm cutting this on, um, on the Oracle 651 vinyl setting, which is a blade of one. Okay, it's already on there. So we'll just see how it goes. It's gonna go ahead. Um, I've got everything set up here and we're just gonna hit send. So right now it's just reading those registration marks. Again, we did not put any of the vinyl on the registration marks because I wanted those to be able to read and I was afraid the shininess would make it a little bit more difficult to read. So now that it's read those, it's gonna go ahead and start cutting. So again, it's just cutting that red offset line that we put around each of our um, little wrappers here. Okay, so now that it's all done, I am going to do a little, a little test before I peel it off my mat. I'm gonna do a little test peel. I know it cut through the vinyl, but I wanna see if it cut through the sticker paper, and it did not. Uh, looks like it's tried to. So I figured I would have to make some adjustments. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is just send it through again um, the nice thing is once you, if you don't unload it, I, you know, I don't really have to make too many changes. So I'm just going to send it through for a second pass and see if that does the trick. So I'm not making any changes to my screen. I'm just going to hit send and then it's going to go through, read my registration marks again, and then it's going to cut again. So since I did not unload anything, Nothing should have moved. Granted, with the registration marks, um, you would like to think it would cut in the same place again, but that's kind of iffy. Um, it's better if you don't move anything, then everything will be the same as the first cut. So we'll see if um, perhaps just going through for a second pass might be enough to cut through the sticker paper and the vinyl. Again, I'm using the um, Silhouette Oracle 651 vinyl setting right now, just on the standard settings that the machine came with. Typically, I would do a test cut before I did this, but I um, didn't really leave myself enough extra vinyl on the sticker paper to give me a spot to do a test cut. So I'm just gonna do it this way. So it's all done. Let's go ahead and peel that corner up again and see if it cut through everything this time. And it still did not, and it's not quite ready. So I'm gonna leave the settings the same. All I'm going to do this time is make my blade a little bit deeper. I'm gonna go to the two, and I'm hoping that that should be enough uh, to cut through. I can see the lines are there on the back side of the sticker paper. Um, just need to go a little bit deeper to cut through that. So again, the only change I made was turn my, um, blade up to two. I'm actually not even going to make any changes on the screen. I'm not even going to tell it that I went to two. Uh, and I'm just going to hit send. And again, it's going to read the registration marks and it is cutting in the exact same place every time because we didn't move anything on our mat. So if you were cutting this out and say you don't have sticker paper and all you have is regular printer paper, putting the um, vinyl or contact paper on top of your regular um, printer paper would be sufficient to make it waterproof and also give it the stickiness that it needs to go around. So I would do this 
Um, you know, if you didn't have sticker paper, you could print it this way too. And would you look at that? That's what it needed. So just a little bit of a deeper blade. So I'm peeling this off of the carrier sheet of um, the sticker paper. So it did not cut through the carrier sheet. It just cut through the um, sticker paper and the vinyl on top. So um, vinyl silhouette or a Cal 651 setting. Um, the only thing we did different, uh, technically we've done three passes now, but a uh, blade of two. So I think if you did a blade of two, one pass and left the rest of your settings the same, I think it would cut through. So now that it's cut, let's go ahead and unload. Can move the machine off to the side. So you can see it did not cut through my sticker sheet. The pack is still all intact here, it's still one page but it did just cut through my, my um, labels here. So I can just peel these off. It's got the stickiness on the back because I use sticker paper and it's got a little bit actually, uh, nope. So I goofed up. Um, we should have cut these separate because I didn't think about it cut them together. So our offset is now this white sticker paper instead of cutting the offset in. So to fix that, what I would do, cut your, your um, stickers without an offset and then make another page with just your offset of this and cut that out of um, your contact paper or your vinyl separately and then you'd have to stick them together but since what i did um, i'm using sticker paper so i don't need that extra bit of stickiness the vinyl is just going to make this waterproof so now i can find you can there's still some residue left on here and that's kind of where the seam was so now I know where the seam is on my bottle. You have a little bit of a lip here and I can just start one end right here on the lip. And again, you're working with curved surfaces. So take your time. And this is an empty water bottle, which probably makes it a little bit more difficult as well. Versus a full water bottle perhaps would be a little bit easier. And then they just meet and attach on the back. And then there is our beautiful water bottle ready for graduation. Um, you know, these make great party favors or even just to, you know, kind of class up the event a little bit. Um, everybody will be really excited to pull these out um, and drink them. So that is how you can make a water bottle label ready for graduation.